So Pedro Neto has officially become a Chelsea player and we await to see what he can do in the Royal Blue of Chelsea this season for Enzo Maresca. But I wanted in this show to take a look at him as a player, what he done most impressively for Wolves despite those injury concerns which we've already touched on and why actually he could prove to be one of Chelsea's most effective creators in the final third, despite looking at other players and feeling like they will be the ones to take up that mantle. So if you like the sound of that, please hit that like button. Please share this video around with fellow Chelsea fans to get more people joining in on the community. But I think the first place to start is obviously an overview of Pedro Neto signing for Chelsea. He's 24 years old, which actually is a lot younger than I think most people thought he was because feels like he's been around for a long period of time, especially at Wolves. We've known his name for quite a while. And of course, because he's had so many injuries, he you know, hasn't played that long and he also hasn't played that many games. So in a way, he is fresh, but he has also spent a lot of time out. So people have kind of maybe forgotten how long ago he actually signed for Wolves. But he plays predominantly on the right, but he can play off the left. We'll talk about that because I think that's going to be an interesting area to look at in terms of how balance wise it actually works for Maresca at Chelsea even though as we'll see he predominantly plays his best football or regularly plays more naturally off the right but he can do damage off the other side so it's not like he cannot play there 14 goals and assists last season he has over 100 111 Premier League appearances and his previous clubs of course were Braga before moving to the Premier League for Wolves obviously he played for Portugal at the Euros this summer now when I think of Pedro Neto, one of the things that surprised me when I started to look at some of these clips was I think of his speed, I think of his ability in transition, taking on his opposing fullback and kind of being that, I mean, in a way, a little bit of a classic winger, um, someone who looks to get a goal, score nice goals, uses rapid speed, and that really hurts and terrifies opposing defences. Now, it's not that the clips we're going to look at and the screenshots we're going to look at don't show that. It's more his ability to find the right pass to create goal scoring opportunities, really good goal scoring opportunities for his teammates and how for Wolves, even though he didn't spend a lot of time on the pitch last season, how effective a creator he was. It's almost like, I'm not saying to the same level, but the way Chelsea fans feel about Rhys James, whenever Rhys James is on the pitch, he is one of Chelsea's best creators throughout the entirety of the season based on minutes. And it very much was the case for Neto at Wolves last season. Here's an example in a goal against Tottenham earlier last season where you see him Again, using his speed, he's a very dangerous transition player. He's a player that causes havoc. He's got such unrelenting speed. He's a good dribbler too. But I love the way once he gets into the box, he cuts back here. He could maybe look for a low shot across Vicario, but instead he cuts back onto his left foot. And, and you know, just obviously, just based on what you can see on the picture here, but maybe some people or other players would, would have absolutely taken the shot or maybe could have been outnumbered made a bad decision but he calms down he takes the ball looks for a pass plays a brilliant ball to the edge of the box where Joao Gomez is there to finish and it's effectively a tap in and a really good goal for Wolves so here we see the precision of his of his decision making and again away from home a big game for Wolves and of course it was against Chelsea now this I think for a lot of Chelsea fans is what they're mainly thinking about Pedro Neto in kind of a positive sense because Neto did Chelsea a lot of harm unfortunately he's he's one of those classic Chelsea players that we sign after they do a lot of damage to us let's hope he starts scoring a lot of goals for us but uh, this is a great example again now yes this is helped by the fact that Thiago Silva is very much isolated but it also shows again Pedro Neto's uh, bravery his ability and confidence in himself to get to the byline to cut back into the box and to really set up his teammates for some great opportunities another example here um, again this time Mateus Cunha feels quite similar in a way to the way that goal ended um, against Spurs but here it's Cunha finishing it off and that day watching him live Neto caused Chelsea serious problems and it's not just about him out wide receiving the ball going to the touchline and cutting it back which of course is very effective it's also his ability in more central areas in a more crowded area to find the right pass and again here against Bournemouth he receives the ball in field takes it central he's got a couple of options here Wang is making a good off the ball run but he makes the right pass to Cunha who finishes brilliantly but the way of pass to this is Maybe something that's underrated because you see goals like this, you see passes like this all the time and you think yeah, it's a little bit simple. Maybe actually you look at the finisher here and go, it's a great finish. But 
we know from a Chelsea point of view how many times a poor final pass, a poor decision, a poor weight of ball, the, the ball that's behind the player, how much that can ruin and break down an opportunity. And this is one of the things that's great about Neto, even with the speed and movement he has, even with quick thinking. His technique doesn't seem to let him down. He's able to really judge the situation. But this is another example of him going 1v1, a kind of a, a deeper position, not exactly a transition opportunity where he has loads of green space in front of him. He has to get through several bodies, but he backs himself. He's got the balance to keep himself upright and still go forward. And then again, pick out a really good pass, which Huang finishes against Aston Villa. And I think this is probably one of the things that makes him a very suitable signing for Maresca because Maresca at Leicester from what we know and already what we've seen at Chelsea he likes to use width and he likes to use especially wide players now when we say wide players that isn't always natural wingers in pre-season we've seen Malo Gusto take up that position you may even see a left back take up that position so it's not always the case that a natural winger will take up that position but he wants to obviously crowd the center win possession win territory and then be able to isolate the winger against their opposing fullback that level of thinking in the final third sometimes is really lacking I think Noni Manawake is is another example of this in the sense that that he does a lot of good work getting into the final third, but it's sometimes, and I think a lot of the time, that final decision making from him isn't always the best. Either he overhits a pass, um, he takes a shot when he probably shouldn't. There's a better option there. Chelsea fans have been infuriated when Raheem Sterling has done that. Mikhailo Mudrik, I think, is, is an extreme example where he can do the first bit good, but he either wildly um, shoots the ball over the bar or doesn't make the right decision, runs back into trouble. It's that precision and that kind of element of control and tempo when he gets into the box that I think makes Neto hopefully a level above and a real difference maker for Chelsea in these kind of examples. Now, this isn't to say that Neto's creativity is maybe higher than what Cole Palmer can bring you from a deeper area or even what, say, Enzo Fernandez could if he really elevates his game and influence with Chelsea this season. Uh, but it does show you in these kind of moments, maybe just adding an extra level of creativity and extra level of um, influence and just neat trickery 1v1 which hopefully will help Maresca and hopefully in games where Chelsea are maybe struggling to break down opposition can add an extra threat and an extra way to open up space potentially for others and, and for Neto to create those opportunities. The last part is just looking at Chelsea's lineup. I think the huge question, and I've already brought up this question a number of times uh, talking about Maresca and talking about Nkunku and Palmer. And because of the fl flurry of options that Chelsea have in attack of, of how is it all going to fit together? How does it impact midfield? How do you get the best players on the pitch? But and also understanding the need for balance. You know, do, you don't want to have really lopsided areas of the pitch where potentially in midfield you're going to be isolated and hurt because that will eventually undermine you. And I'm sure Maresca wants to have that balance of five in attack, five in defence, you know, being able to cover if Chelsea do lose the ball. So that's a big judgment call. And obviously Neto plays more off the right but I think there is a bigger problem with him playing off the right because of course that is kind of the area where Cole Palmer plays and it was interesting watching the game against Inter Milan Palmer started as a right winger but really moved a little bit more I guess inside right that's really where traditionally he plays but in in the team if he's going to start as a right winger even if he isn't always playing that role you have to ask the question you know where's Neto going to fit in where does he play does he play off the left do then you move Cole Palmer centrally? What does that mean for central midfield? Are you potentially losing a central midfielder? Does Nkunku or Palmer have to play an eight? So maybe moving him to the left is actually an easier solution, which of course will impact Mikhailo Mudrik and Raheem Sterling. But I think for Pedro Neto's sake, this is where he needs to get into the team. He's come to Chelsea probably to be a first teamer. So I think that's the big conversation to have. And then it probably allows you in some ways to have Neto, Nkunku and Palmer all playing together. Now, Theory and reality is obviously different. Do all three of these players work together in the way a lot of us dream they, they will? We'll have to wait and see. We had this quite a few years ago when Chelsea signed all those players in 2020. We thought, oh, it's going to be wonderful, these players clicking. And obviously, it didn't quite work out like that. But I do feel this is better because, you know, again, lopsided. You want to have width on both sides for Chelsea. You want to be able to have a bit of balance in the team. I think the big question about Neto, Nkunku and Palmer is, if you want all three in the team... Do you then have to sacrifice a centre forward in Nicholas Jackson or we'll see what happens with Victor Osserman or, or Mark Gee, who's played a lot during pre-season? Do you have to take one of them out and potentially play in Kunku as the number nine? And really what you want is a situation where Chelsea can win the ball, keep possession in central midfield, but then be able to 
unleash Neto against his opposing fullback either on the left or the right and of course Palmer is going to play such a huge role and I want to see Nkunku floating kind of around the centre forward and again there is room to mix this up so I, I, I think it's going to be quite exciting to see how Neto fits into all of this and I think for the Man City game whether he starts or not I think it's probably unlikely but I think an exciting player to have off the bench especially against a tiring City defence so is, is someone that I think creatively could add something massive for Chelsea in transition the, the threat is there and whether Chelsea can very much uh, utilise that to the best of its ability. I do think this is one of Chelsea's more exciting signings this summer. Of course, the questions over Chelsea signing more attackers and the clutter there, but that, that's a different discussion point. I think if we just isolate Pedro Neto as a talent, I think it's undeniable that he is a game changer when he remains fit. If Chelsea can keep him fit, which is I think is the defining part of Neto, he could prove to be one of Chelsea's best signings, not only in recent years, but especially this summer.